let's talk about some of the reasons that your testosterone could be low. And I will dig into some of the papers that are associated with this. And hopefully this will be revealing to many of you. Let's start with the most obvious reasons, that being insulin resistance. So there are myriad studies to suggest that insulin resistance is associated with decreased testosterone. Here's a paper from the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism from 2005. Increasing insulin resistance is associated with a decrease in Leydig cell testosterone secretion in men. Remember that Leydig cells are around the, within the seminiferous tubules and produce testosterone in response to LH, luteinizing hormone coming from the anterior pituitary. It's very clear. There is a strong association here between insulin resistance and low testosterone. Another paper from the same journal, low testosterone levels are common and associated with insulin resistance in men with diabetes. Okay. Yet another paper, the dark side of testosterone deficiency, uh, type two diabetes and insulin resistance. This is from a journal called Andrology, uh, January, 2013. But you can see here in the abstract, a considerable body of evidence exists suggesting a link among reduced testosterone plasma levels, type two diabetes and insulin resistance. Hypogonadal men are at a higher risk of type two diabetes. There's probably a dual causal relationship there, meaning that hypogonadism probably increases your risk for type 2 diabetes. And I would say that type 2 diabetes and or insulin resistance, aka metabolic dysfunction, also increases your risk of a low testosterone because those Leydig cells, your pituitary, all of your hormonal axes are not going to function properly. They go here further. They go on to say further, here we evaluate the relationships between testosterone, metabolic syndrome, that is metabolic uh, that is metabolic dysfunction and insulin resistance and discuss relationships among androgen deficiency and these factors, especially as it ultimately relates to the development of cardiovascular disease and erectile dysfunction, two things that none of us want. So it's quite clear that there is a strong relationship here. I don't know how much more we really have to say about this other than the fact that there are preventable, reversible causes of insulin resistance. I've talked about this many, many times on previous podcasts. If you are of the opinion that insulin resistance, diabetes is not preventable, that you must take insulin, that you must take metformin, then you should probably get a new doctor because your doctor is not telling you the whole story in any way, shape, or form. Insulin resistance is highly preventable, totally reversible with really two easy steps. Number one, completely eliminate processed sugars. If you've listened to my podcast before, I've done many podcasts on the differences between processed sugar, that is sucrose, which is a disaccharide of glucose and fructose, or fructose in processed form, high fructose corn syrup, et cetera, and fruit. There's a big difference between those two. I do not think that you have to eliminate fruit or honey, though if you are frankly diabetic and insulin resistant, limiting your carbohydrates from them, at least temporarily, is probably not a bad idea, though you don't need to completely eliminate them. I do not believe that fruit and honey cause diabetes. I do not believe that fruit and honey worsen diabetes. There are good studies to show that honey can improve insulin sensitivity. It may raise hemoglobin A1C, which is a 90-day average of your blood sugar, but that is, a reflect, that is a reflection of the fact that when you are diabetic, your body is not handling glucose very well, and that honey is going to have glucose and fructose, and it is going to raise your blood sugar. But indices of insulin sensitivity do improve with true raw honey, not a processed honey, not a high fructose corn syrup. So I do not fear fruit and honey in diabetes. Don't overdo it, obviously, but they did not cause it. Processed sugar is the problem. You know where this is. Sodas, cookies, cakes, cereals, et cetera. That in conjunction and often co-occurring with seed oils is the main problem with diabetes and obesity. These go hand in hand, metabolic dysfunction. All of this is connected. If you eliminate processed seed oils, processed sugars, I strongly believe, and I will bet every single one of you a ribeye, that you will see improvements in your metabolic dysfunction if you eliminate those completely. 